namin Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na nagdagampanan na huwag maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw na ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasala. Amen. A wonderful and fun-filled at home morning, students. Are you excited for another topic for this day? I'm sure you are. So what are you waiting for? Sit properly and look for a comfortable place to listen and watch so you can better understand our lesson properly. Feel free to use our comment box below for the interaction and questions that you want to ask about the topic. But remember, please be polite with your words. Do not use unnecessary comments that is not related to what is being discussed. This is lesson 4 of your quarter 1 module and the objective of our lesson is to discuss how you sex in human is determined and determine the probability of having male or female gender. Now let's proceed to our lesson. What makes you excited if your mother is pregnant? You may be thinking if it is a baby boy or a baby girl, right? But how can we know? How is the sex of a child determined? Let's find out. But before that, let's see how familiar you are with the different terms that we're going to use in our discussion for today. Identify what is being defined by arranging the jumbled letters. Comment down your answer. Are you ready? Number one, these are the female sex cells. The answer is egg cells. Did you get the correct answer? Great! Number two, these are the male gametes. The answer is sperm cells. Did you get the correct answer? Very good. Number three. The process involved in which sperm and egg cell unites to form a zygote. The answer is fertilization. Did you get the correct answer? Very good! Number 4 A thread-like structure of nucleic acids and protein found in the nucleus of most living cells carrying genetic information in the form of genes. The answer is chromosome. Did you get the correct answer? Excellent! For the additional question, how many chromosomes does human have? Right! Humans have 46 chromosomes in each cell. These chromosomes are found in pairs, so therefore, how many pairs of chromosome does human have? Correct! We have 23 pairs of chromosome. There are two types of chromosomes. The first 22 pairs are called autosomes, while the last pair is the sex chromosome. The sex chromosome will determine the sex of an individual. But how? Let's see. During your grade 8, 
you have discussed the two types of cell division. One type of cell division is responsible for the production of our gametes or sex cells. If your answer is meiosis, you are correct. We all know that meiosis is a process where a single cell divides twice to produce four cells containing half the original amount of genetic information. These cells are our sex cells, sperm in males, eggs in females. For you to easily understand this one, let's use the illustration. For example, the 46 chromosomes of the father will get divided into half to form 23 chromosomes in the sperm. Similarly, 46 chromosomes of the mother will be divided into half and they will form a 23 chromosomes in egg cells. Out of these 23 chromosomes in sperm and egg, one of these is the sex chromosome. So, one sperm will have either an X chromosome or a Y chromosome, while the X cell from the mother has both X chromosome. Again, the sperm cell from the father carry X and Y chromosome, while the X cell of the mother carry XX chromosome. Now imagine the situation where the fertilization takes place. Case number one. When the sperm cell carrying an X chromosome unites with an egg cell containing X chromosome, what will be the result? They will form a zygote which contains XX chromosomes. And this zygote will lead to the development of a baby girl. Case number two. When the sperm cell carrying a Y chromosome unites with an egg cell containing X chromosome, the resulting zygote will now have X and Y chromosomes. This zygote will lead to the formation of a baby boy. But what are the chances that a baby will be a boy or a girl. Why some family have all girls, some all boys, and some are mixed? Let's use the Panet Square to answer this question. Grab your notebooks and try to solve this one. Let's check if you solve it right. Did you get it right? Great job! Based on the Punnett square, how many percent of children would you expect to be male and female? Precisely! Your answer is correct. There is 50% chance for male and 50% chance for female. 
So based from the illustration that we used from the formation of zygotes containing the sex chromosomes of a baby, up to using the Punnett square to determine the chances of having a baby boy or a baby girl, who do you think was the one responsible for the sex determination of the babies? Is it the mother or the father? Mother has only eggs to pass on their egg cells. And father can give either an X or Y in their sperm cells. Therefore, sex is determined by the father and the chance of producing male or female is 50-50. Now let's have a short game. Let's call it fact or bluff. Comment fact if the statement is true and bluff if the statement is false. Are you ready? Number 1. The 23rd pair of chromosome is called the sex chromosome. The answer is fact. Very good. Number two. There are 23 chromosomes in each cell of the human body. The answer is bluff. The correct answer is 23 pairs of chromosome, not 23. If you answer it right, great! Number 3 Mitosis is a process where a single cell divides twice to produce four cells containing half the original amount of genetic information. The answer is bluff. It is meiosis that divides cell to produce four cells. Did you get it right? Very good. Number four. If a sperm carrying a Y chromosome unite with an X cell containing X chromosome, it will form a zygote containing XY chromosome and will develop into a baby boy. The answer is fact. The sex chromosome of a boy or a male is XY. Did you get it right? Great job! Number 5. Female has only X to pass on in their offspring. The answer is fact because the sex chromosome of female is XX. Did you get it right? Very good! Number 6. Mother is responsible in determining the sex of a child. The answer is bluff. It is the father who determines the sex of a child because he can give either an X or Y chromosome. If you get it right, well done! Now for our second activity, let's complete the concept map.
Human chromosome has two types. What do you call the non-sex related trait? Correct! They are autosomes, or sometimes they are also referred to as somatic chromosome or body chromosome. Number 2. What is the second type of chromosome? Correct! The sex chromosome. These chromosomes will undergo what process of cell division? Very good! It is meiosis. Meiosis will form our gametes or sex cells. Which sex cell is carrying XX chromosome? Very good! It is the egg cell. And which gamete carries X and Y chromosome? Very good! It is the sperm cells. If this sperm cell and egg cell unite, it will form a... Correct! It will form a zygote that will lead to the formation of female if it has XX chromosome and male if it has XY chromosome. And that concludes our lesson for today. To summarize, here are the key points that we have learned. The total number of chromosomes in each cell of an individual is 46 or 23 pairs of chromosomes. The 23rd pair is known as the sex chromosome. Female has both X chromosomes, while male carry X and Y chromosome, in which males determine the sex of a child. There is 50% chance of getting a male or female offspring. The greater the number of offspring, the greater is the chance of getting expected 1 is to 1 ratio of male and female. Now let's answer this question. What is the big difference about the X and Y chromosomes that makes male and female different? Specifically, the Y chromosome contains a male-determining gene called the SRY gene. That causes the testes to form in the embryo and results in the development of external and internal male genitalia. This gene tells a baby to be a boy. And without the SRY gene, babies develop into girls. So that's all for our topic today. If you have further questions, make sure to take note of that so that your subject teacher will help you and guide you to deepen your understanding. And don't forget to answer your activity 4 on your learning module pages 24 to 25. Once again, this is Mam Cherry, your science teacher, and I hope you learned a lot today. See you next week. Good day, everyone!